and China's hound's new generation coming together in revolutionary ways to fight hate. Take a look. Here in the heart of New York City's Chinatown, there are signs that life is slowly getting back to normal. It's a welcome relief for many. The global pandemic wreaked havoc on this close-knit community, both financially and emotionally. Once thriving businesses, now permanently closed, and residents concerned and in some cases fearful for their safety. Asian lives matter! As racist attacks continue to plague the Asian American community here and across the country. Pearl River Mart owner Joanne Kwong rallying to take care of her neighbors, especially the elderly. We've done a couple of different initiatives that we're super proud of. One is called Light Up Chinatown, and we ended up having people adopt a lantern, and you can go visit your lantern in Chinatown. It basically brightens up the street for our elders, you know, walk in the streets at night so that they feel a little bit safer. Established in 1971, Pearl River Mart became the first Chinese department store in the U.S. Today, a new location and a new chapter in a long history. It's about bringing people together, providing a space, and for 50 years, uh, this was our 50th anniversary, Pearl River has been that community space for Chinatown and for the Chinatown community. But we feel very proud to be Asian here, and we want to share kind of culture and space with each other, but also with the rest of the city. We were visiting Pearl River Market around 10 years ago, just the double whammy of COVID and with like a lot of what's going on in the city, so I thought it would be really good to support it. And here, 200 feet that will take you back in time. Doyer Street, home to Wilson Tang's Namwa Tea Parlor, which just last year celebrated their 100 year anniversary. One of the ma major challenges during the pandemic was just keeping our staff safe. We had an um, interesting schedule. Like we were open a little later, we'll close a little earlier. The business was concerned was, was keeping our guys in a safe place. Wilson is heartened and inspired by his community's actions. I am really proud of um, today's young adults who are mobilizing to help the elderly in need, help sign up for vaccines or to help them with personal safety devices, just advocating for them because we're not here without them. Being in lockdown for the first month, of course, there's a lot of anxiety, people, there's a lot of fear. But I think that's when ideas started bubbling within the community. How are we going to help the businesses that aren't surviving? Like Wilson, Corey Ng, too, was born and raised here, opening up Milk and Cream Cereal Bar four years ago. The shop then partnered with other businesses in the area. When Chinatown really needed the help, when the elderly needed meals, when businesses needed fundraising, everyone came together. It's a lot of little micro organizations doing their individual parts with all the same mission. The new generation embodying the same resilience and fortitude exemplified by their ancestors who first came to the U.S. and called these streets home. I would love for my son to take this over. That would be great uh, just to keep the traditions alive. Now to worlds and flavors colliding as two of New York's top culinary masters share not only some of their best dishes, but their uniquely personal Asian American perspectives. Chinese American chef Anita Lowe, once a top chef masters competitor, now traveling the world with Tour de Forks and Jordan and Dino, a Canadian American chef with Filipino roots, frequent host of late night eats for the ultimate foodie chat on how cooking brought them back to the heart of their identity and why cuisine is key to the celebration of culture. In the past, I've done stuff Food Network, Cooking Channel. It was weird transitioning into more of the, the TV, like chef entertainment side, because growing up, me being a chef was all I ever wanted to be. That was my goal. Jean-Georges, Spago, and then also the French Laundry. I knew what I wanted. I wanted a Michelin star. I am Filipino and I'm using my Filipino both heritage as well as my restaurants to learn more about the Filipino culture. I was born in Toronto, Canada, lived there for 10 years, then moved to LA, lived there for 10 years, and then now New York for 13 years. I just came from this food-obsessed family. I was studying French literature at the time. French culture is all about food. 
actually. And I ended up in cooking school in Paris and just fell in love and opened my own place, which was Anissa. I had that for 17 years. And now I'm hosting culinary tours around the planet with a company called the Tour de Forks. It's like the best job ever. It's all upscale, food focused. I teach a hands-on cooking class in each of these. Anita! <laughs> Hi, Jordan. Jordan. Nice, nice to, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, right, you want to come have a seat? Yeah. Ah, you, please. <laughs> How has your like heritage and culture influenced the food that you necessarily, or, or even ingredients and techniques that you explore and use in your own cooking? Yeah, you know, when I when I grew up, I grew up in, in Michigan. I grew up, you know, and I'm much older than you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Asian don't raisin, and you look pretty young, That's so true. I, I'll just yeah. say it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't actually have the perm yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's coming. You're like, it's, it's coming. coming, yeah. One day I'm just going to wake up, and I'm going to be like, yeah. So I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit. It's okay. just like the harsh, predominantly white suburb. Me too. Yeah. It was, th there was one other Asian in my large, pretty large school. Yeah. There was one black kid, yeah. and maybe a handful of, of kids from Arab descent. Okay. And we were all ridiculed, you know, taunted. It, it just wasn't cool to be you know, anything different there. You couldn't mm -hmm. be too smart. You couldn't be too stupid. The kids were just evil there. Wow. Um, so I, I just grew up, like, not wanting to be Asian. Mm -hmm. I didn't want kids to come over to my house because sometimes it would be my mom's Chinese food and and, and everyone would be like, ew, what's that? You know, and, yeah. like, like ridicule. I would get chicken adobo, I would get beef synagogue, I would get... Lucky you. I, I would get toyo, which is like this fried, super smelly, literally decaying fish. But once you fry it, it tastes amazing. Yeah. It's like incredible <laughs> umami, it really hits your, your all of your senses. Your smell, not so much, but everything else is delicious. Uh, and, and, and I would just get made fun of, and people nonstop, just like you, they're like, what, what are you eating? Like, you're, like, you're eating that, you're not buying like this, this, this cheeseburger or whatever. I'm like, A, no, we don't have money. B, like, this food is delicious, but at the same time, it made me question it, too. And I started to believe, too, like, uh, like you said, where it, maybe, maybe I don't want to be Asian. Maybe I'd rather be like everyone else. And, I, and similar to you, I was one of two Filipinos. My graduating class was 600 large, and it was like, un, un, like under 10 Asians in total. Yeah. Maybe two or three black people. Like, and even California, a couple of Mexicans. And, and I, I, I understand what, what, you, or what you went through. My stepfather was white. Um, you know, my parents both worked, so I had all these different nannies. My nanny that was with me the longest was Hungarian, white as well. Yeah. So um, culturally, I was a mutt, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, because I looked this way, which made me even more want to, you know, shun my, my Asian-ness. Yeah. But I think through, f I came back to it through food, honestly. When I was coming up in this industry, it was uh, late 80s, early 90s, and like Asian, quote unquote, fusion was, was the in thing at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, completely trained, you know, classic French. French. But I, I just decided that I was going to start bringing in those those ingredients. Yeah. And the kitchens are just more accepting. At Anissa, my signature dish it ended up being influenced by my mom and my dad. It was a shalung bao, like a soup dumpling. You know, being born in Toronto, then growing growing up in LA, and then living in New York, I, didn't, I never got exposed to legitimately the Asian culture and continent in terms of cuisine and ingredient, let alone Filipino. Yeah. So what I've found, especially through Flip Ziggy, that I'm so grateful for, is that I now am able to explore and learn more about being Filipino and what it means to be and honor the Filipino heritage each and every day. But at the same time, I also get, I get a little grief for it because Filipinos will be like, you can't speak Tagalog, you don't, you don't know what these ingredients are. And I'm like, I'm just learning and I want you to teach me, you know, and it's, and it's funny because as I feel like it's maybe it's a second gen problem where I'm not from the Philippines, so Filipinos don't quite get me. I'm from com completely two different countries, really. So I was never able to truly place myself, but I find, found that through that struggle and through me being unique, that is actually what has been my key and star ingredient into my success now. And my grandmother, like my Lola, uh, which is grandmother in, in Tagalog on all sides, but specifically on my dad's side, she was the one that really gave me my, like my understanding and love and passion for Filipino flavors. So I have four flip ziggies now. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would say that like 90 Asian excellent. Yeah, right? <laughs> I would say that 90% of them are all in, like all the food and flavors is all from my Lola. And I think that 
you know, it, it's important for all Asians to really hearken back to your roots and just know that whether or not you know a lot or a little, all that matters is that you're proud to be Asian. Bits of, you know, this is like home style. This is my mom's mm. dish. I'm legitimately drooling right now. So this is what my mom used to call soy braised pork. Okay. So I got some, it's got a, some pork you. belly and some some Berkshire spare ribs. Yeah. Baby back ribs. And it's got some fried tofu, which really just soaks up all those juices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just um, a vessel to but just yeah. for flavor. Again, this is the base of my um, soup dumpling. Mm. Um, oh my God. So, so yeah, but I, I mean, it's kind of like sinigang only without the vinegar. So, you know, what, what, I, what I found with Filipino cuisine, this was six years ago, was, you know, it was, wasn't was as popular. So my business partners came to me with an idea of this fun taqueria, and I was like, all right, let's make it, let's do that, but make it Filipinos. And now, Clip Siggy, it's like, it's Filipino food in Mexican vessels. And my hope is that they question it, and through food, op it opens their mind, you know? And, and I want them to taste it and go, I know what guac is, I know pico, I know tortilla, but what is this? chicken and pork like vinegar soy thing and hopefully that'll help you know be the the gateway into my culture so in front of you you have my grandmother is the one that um really inspires me so uh there's there's also pork belly so i there's chicken and pork adobo in there we made adobo and together yeah we did we did literally <laughs> did without even knowing so inside of there you have french fries pico de gallo sour cream guac cheese french fries yeah, pork belly and chicken adobo <laughs> awesome now this is like a little bit of my California yeah. kind of creeping in. Mm. Yo. Mm. <laughs> this is great. This is feeding my soul. This mm. tastes like love, like mother, grandmother, love, culture, heritage, all in one. This is what I would make, no joke, this is what I got made fun of for, for bringing to school. Right. I hope like any Asians hearing this now, if they are being made fun of, understand that their food, you know, is delicious and like, and it's okay to be different. This is why we got into food, I think, uh -huh. you know? Our unstated mission, mission statement at Anissa it was about multiculturalism. It was about bringing new ideas from other cultures to fine dining yeah. in the hopes that people would be more adventurous. Food is culture, food is identity. If you're open to other foods, hopefully that will translate into being open to other cultures and other people. You know, think about it. Not everyone necessarily knows how or n wants to learn how to dance. Not everyone wants to see art or, or care for it. Not a, not a lot of people want to get out of the comfort zone and travel. However, every single human on this earth, regardless of how you look or where you're from, has to eat. Common it's, denominator. Yeah, it's a common denominator, right? So it's like, if you can really strike a chord and get someone to remember like a Filipino or Chinese dish that, or something that our family has created, maybe they'll be a little bit more curious about our cultures and really understand that there's more than just your little circle that influences your, like day in, day out, your community. So I, mean, I think that that's what's so powerful about food and I find that you know, true chefs really resonate with, with that idea of like, here's my culture, here's my bite, here's my soul on a plate, please try it and hopefully you love it. You're gonna have to tell me to stop eating this, because... Mm. Pleasure having you. Thank you so much for coming by. You're welcome back anytime. Thanks for that amazing burrito. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, take care. I'll see you soon. Yep. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.